Good morning, my brothers. Welcome to Man Up Humboldt County. You are in for a blessing today. You know, one of the most important things that I've learned throughout this pandemic is how much I took certain things for granted. And one of them was, if I don't see you this year, I'll see you next year. And I told my grandchildren some of what I'm telling you right now. And you know what? I got to quit doing that. So the next time I see you, don't think I'm weird if I just want to hug everybody two or three times. But I'm glad you're here this morning. And I know you're going to be blessed. And I know you're going to be encouraged. Pastor Willie and, and, and Pastor Marty, the conversation they're going to have, it is off the charts. And then I'm going to close out talking about a man named Joseph. But in between all of that, I have got a dear friend. His name is Leon Patillo. He used to sing uh, with this podunk uh, musician named Santana. But now he's lifting his voice for Hosanna. You're going to love what you hear. He's got a new CD coming out. You want to get a copy of that. But I just want to say thank you again for joining us. Sit back, relax, and be blessed by my friend, Leon Patillo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We must believe, we must believe in Him. We must believe, we must believe in Him. We must believe, we must believe in Him. Praise His name. Come on, y'all. We must believe. We must believe in Him. We must believe. We must believe in Him. We must believe. We must believe in Him. Praise His name. He put His love. He put His love in my heart. He put His love. He put his love in my heart. He put his love. He put his love in my heart. And I'm gonna praise his name. I, I, I do believe. Believe in Jesus Christ. I do believe. Believe in Jesus Christ. I do believe. Believe in Jesus Christ. Praise His name. He put His joy. He put His joy in my life. He put His joy. He put His joy in my life. He put His joy in my life. And I can't help but pray. Christ, I do believe yeah. in Jesus Christ. I'm gonna praise His name. What we're gonna do? We're gonna praise His name every day. We're gonna praise His name as we open up. We're gonna praise. Let Him lead. Let him lead, praise his name. Yes, sir. Hey, good morning. Welcome to uh, our men's conference. It is uh, March 20th, Saturday morning, and we are so glad uh, you are with us. My name is Willie Bowles. This is Marty Pronovo. 
and we are uh, uh, a couple of the senior leaders at Lifehouse Humboldt. And if you've been to our men's conference in the past, you'll know that we would normally have it in our sanctuary. We would have the wing. It would be packed with men, and we had a great time, but we just can't do that now. So this is really our first ever virtual conference. So so welcome. Marty, say hi. Hey, how's everybody doing? I'm glad you joined us. This is a little unusual for us, Never, as Willie said. We've never done a virtual conference. Yep. So here we are. I don't know how there are there giveaways today. That's you know what? No There's raffle. that would have been a, that would have been awesome. Would have been an idea. Hey, our second virtual conference. Yeah, we'll we figure that giveaways. out. Giveaways. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, but we are saving lots of money because we didn't buy donuts or donuts or coffee. But you know what? If you feel shorted, yeah, and you still want to give, you can text seven seven nine seven seven. Put L Humboldt in the message, and you can still give to us. So if you want to pay for this conference, even though it's totally free, if you want to pay for it, go right ahead. (laughs) Reach into the wallet of the person next to you. That's right. Give like you've always wanted to give. That's right. Well, for some of you, that'll be your wife, though. That's right. Watch this at home, so that might not work out. Yeah. Um, Hey, anyway, we're we're here. We want to talk to you on Saturday morning. Again, thanks for being with us. Um, So obviously, we're doing a virtual conference because... Uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Hopefully, this is coming to end really, really soon. Amen. But uh, I know we sent out a survey, and lots of you guys uh, sent back the survey, and they wanted to know <clears throat> um, about healthy. Was it healthy lifestyles? Healthy habits. Healthy habits. That was twenty-two percent of the men wanted. It. Wow. So, uh, so Marty, we're 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 in the middle of a pandemic. Mm-hmm. I know that you've made some changes. We've all made some changes. Yep. But why don't you tell us some of the healthy habits that you've come up with since since this whole thing started? Yeah. Well, it actually started over the Christmas holiday because my my mother in law who's amazing at getting gifts, uh, and like she, if you put your list, you send it to her, she gets everything on the list. Well, this year she got me something I didn't ask for. And that was a book called Atomic Habits. Mm. It's by a guy named James Clear. And uh, I I had actually, crazy, I had seen the book laying around before I got it as a gift. And I thought, oh, this is an interesting book. And I actually even wrote it down in my notes. And then, lo and behold, I got it for Christmas. So that was pretty amazing. And uh, I said this to uh, a group of people the other day. Like, we preachers use hyperbole a lot. Like, this book changed my life. And we don't really mean it. But this actually is changing my life. Wow. And the reason is, is it's helping me uh, understand that it's not just about making goals, but about creating systems that'll help you achieve those goals. And which for me was the difference maker. Cause I would set goals for myself and I was well meeting, you know, new year's re- resolutions, you know, it ends up being that we lie to ourselves cause we're not going to ever do the things we write down. Um, and so for me, that was just my history with setting goals, but, Reading this book has helped me uh, make it practical and being able to uh, have a system that I use that helps me get towards that goal. So can you give us an illustration? Give us something where you've actually implemented. So, uh, I mean, there's lots of areas. One is um, I'm reading more because um, I would tend to say, well, I'm going to read, you know, two chapters of a book before I go to sleep. Well, I'd end up falling asleep a paragraph in or whatever. (laughs) And so I I just sort of like, basically he starts with, you know, making a tiny change can actually create a huge change later. And so I just started giving myself permission to, hey, I'm going to read a book tonight and I'm going to read as long as I am able to pay attention or, or stay connected to what I'm reading. And sometimes it's a paragraph. Sometimes I find myself going, I want to read more. I want to read two or three chapters. Um, that doesn't happen a lot, but that does happen. And, um, so that's been one change, you know, every morning I get up and I read my Bible before I do anything, before I get on Facebook or any other social media, check my email. Um, you know, it is, I'm going to, I'm going to start with something that is going to feed my soul. So hold on. Ready for the day. So you actually read the Bible before you check Facebook? It's amazing. Oh, it's no, true. That's, yeah. that's spiritual. Yeah. That is it's, something uh, right there. It's the, I'm looking for God's face book. First, there you uh, go. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so it uh, uh, atomic habits, yep, by who James Clear. James Clear. Yes. So it might be a book you guys want to pick yeah. up. Um, so 
let's go back to your illustration here yep. for for reading. So is it is it a, Atomic Habits? Is it a book about setting not just setting goals mm -hmm. but following through? Yeah, it's right. About, it's about basically creating systems that set you up for success. Okay. So you know what they're finding is if you don't have you know a lot of the studies that he cites is if you don't have a plan, you're just not going to do right. it. Right. It's a good idea. Right. That you're never going to follow through on and. Um, I think one of the examples they use is um, they did a, a study with a group of people and they were three separate groups. I can't remember what each group was responsible for, but I remember the group that was successful were people that were going to go and work out every day. They were committing to that and they set a time every day that they were going to work out. Well, they were overwhelmingly more successful than the people who gotcha. said, I'm going to work out, but I don't have a plan to do it. Yeah. Well, you and so, I both... You and I both work out. Yep. You've lost some weight. I have, um, as of today, 18 pounds. Wow, that's now. fantastic. It's amazing. Yep. I know that I find it, with working out, if I don't go first thing in the morning, I'm just not going to go. Yeah. Because you get into day, yep. it gets busy, yep. things happen, and then, you know, sometimes you're just tired. Yeah. So getting up and going for me, getting up and going first thing in the morning yep. really helps. Yep. Well, it's, it's about knowing yourself and knowing your rhythms. So if you yeah. know... Um, I, I, I do well in the afternoon or I do, I'm, I'm a person that if I, I'm like you in terms of, if I haven't worked out by four, it's not going to happen because yeah. then evenings there, we got to make dinner, you know, and have other things to do. So I have to make sure that I work it into my schedule before that time. And yeah. then I know I'm going to be successful and, you know, and I'm that kind of person, even at work, like we, we work in a, a business that, or in a, an environment where we have to be self -start, self starters. Yeah. And if I don't go into work with a plan, I, I have a great ability to waste time. It's amazing. <laughs> so um, now, are you a list? I'm a list person. If, so I like to I like to write out uh, either in the morning or the night before yeah. twenty things that I that I really want to accomplish and get done, and then I try to go through and check them off. Are, are you that type of person? That is something that's been changing for me in this season. Okay. Because I am, that's a system that I have to create to be successful. Yeah. Because if I rely on my memory or my brain, I'm going to get distracted. I yeah. still, in me, is still a junior high youth pastor. <laughs> because squirrel, you know, like, I get distracted easily. And so, uh, if I have a plan, I'll work the plan. Yeah. So. Yeah, I yeah. find that I'm way more successful if I actually have something written down, yep. something I can follow, something I can go through. Yep. Um, and if I can stay on that, it's great. Now, how do you – I know what throws me off are the something comes out of the blue, something comes out, and, yep. and all of a sudden, instead of you controlling your schedule, your schedule's controlling you. Yes. How do you handle that? Uh, badly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still – I think that would be an area – by that, the way, this is not a virtual conference where we're saying we have all the answers. Yes, no, we don't. That's an area that I I have to learn how to create a system for myself that gets me back on track. And that's, I think, one of the things that is talked about in the book is the cue. And I'm missing a cue there because if I get distracted, this happened to me yesterday afternoon. I'm, I'm at work and it hits two o'clock and I had a plan and that plan got changed and then I can't, I have a hard time yeah. getting back on track. Yeah. So I have to learn. That's an area I got to grow in. So. Now how did the pandemic affect you? How did, mm. how did that, did that cause your, I mean, I guess you started reading Atomic Habits after the pandemic. You yeah, started way December. well after, yep. Before that, yep. did you notice a big shift with productivity or how you were? Hard to say because it was so different. You know, I think when that, that believe it or not, a year ago, uh, I know, not necessarily today, but a year ago, close to today, uh, I remember being at our, our discipleship school and telling the students they had to go home and we were going <laughs> to shelter in place. Crazy. And I remember not driving my car for yeah. weeks at a time. And so that was an adjustment in and of itself to just stay on track and get used to events like this and not having people around. And so there were, I think there were new habits that needed to be created in that season. And actually, I think I was actually okay with that Yeah, uh, for a time. And then I realized I actually really love people and want to be around people. So I think when the pandemic first uh, hit, I started playing a new game <laughs> called Netflix. Oh, yes. and I beat it. Yeah. You beat I, I watched everything, everything there. Yes. I, you know, I binged 
for a long time. Has. Honestly, it was it was overwhelming. Yeah. It was depressing. It was it was just hard. And so some of it was going into that and realizing, you know, kind of maybe two or three weeks into it, like, okay, this 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 could keep going. Yeah. And I can't keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. So forcing yourself to make a change. Yeah. And to do something different mm-hmm. based on. Hey, don't you find, I mean, I find that if I have a vision, if I have a goal for my life, I'm I'm more likely to to move forward mm-hmm. and to do the things, you know, I need to do now so that I can get to where I want to go tomorrow. Yeah. Totally. Right? Yeah. Totally. So what kind of goals do you have in, in, in your life? What, what do you set? What do you, and I'm putting you on the spot. You totally but. are. Um, I, I think that, you know, talking about the pandemic, that has really... And it caused all of us to kind of reevaluate what success looks yeah. like. And I don't even think we we really know what church is going to look like coming out of this. I want to believe that we're going to be packed again. And and I'm, I'm going to say that I believe that's going to happen again. Um, but the reality is there's, you know, who knows? I, I don't know. Are we always going to have masks in our car hanging off of our rearview mirrors? I don't yeah. know. Um, but that has caused me to really kind of a reset probably gets used a lot in this season, but it really has been a reset for me, has been a reset for me um, to just focus on, I know as a leader, am I growing every day? You know, I think we've been, as our team have been focused on, are we growing and how are we impacting the people that we do have influence with? And um, I know for you, community is a big deal and, and learning how to do community in a time when that's restricted is yeah. challenging. Well, so, you know, I'm a, I'm a very goal oriented person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think before pre pandemic, I was, uh, my goals were more focused on, um, where, where the church is going to be, how big we're going to get, yeah. how much we're going to grow, yeah. how, you know, and then all of a sudden you get into the pandemic and none of that is a reality. Yeah. And so I know that, that I've refocused in my life, of where am I going to grow? That's really good. What am I going to do? Yeah. How am I going to be better yeah. a year from now, two years from now, 10 years from now? What are the goals that I want to do in my life? Mm-hmm. And focusing on me has really allowed me to be okay with not having these other goals that we had that I don't think were ever really the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, I, right. I don't yeah. think, I, I don't, I... I don't really think the Lord cares whether we have a thousand people or a hundred people. Yeah, that's really good. You know, I think he cares about what we do with the people we have right. and how far we take them and, yep. and, and what we can invest in them. And that goes into community. So, yeah. you know, for me, community is really important. Having people around, having, being involved in it, which has been really hard in the pandemic, but we've learned some lessons. We've learned some tools. We've got some things. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to come out of this, this thing when it's done, I think we're going to be stronger. I think we're going to be better. Um, I think we're going to be more equipped. At least I know I'm going to be more equipped yeah. because of the things that I'm doing in my totally, life. Without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I noticed that in you. I noticed that in all of our team. Everybody's growing. Yeah. And we're changing and we're get, we're working at it. We're having, I think we're learning how to have hard conversations with each other. We're yeah. growing and and sometimes it gets uncomfortable, but we are staying connected in relationship and, and wanting to go deeper. And I think, that's, I think that is also part of it is we're, we value the relationships we have Yeah. because for a while there we're around people and those are so important. Well, you know, and we've always had, I think in our, in our church and our structure with our staff, we've always had family first. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we always meant it, Yeah. but it didn't always play out that way. Right. Right. Now we're in a place where we really are saying family first, have family first. Yeah. And, and that feels good. Yeah. You know, and I think any of the men joining us today um, realize, you know, your family has got to be priority. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you have your faith, then you have your family. And then, you know, really, I think even after family, then you have career, then you have, uh, or not career, after family, you have community. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, all the way down the end of the list somewhere is a career, mm-hmm. you know, because it's it's like one of those things where we say, hey, we're going to have faith in God, we're going to trust him, we're going to do this, but yet we don't. Mm-hmm. Because we're driven, we've got to get there career-wise, we've got to make this happen. Mm-hmm. Where I think really, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. we just need to relax. Yeah, totally. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes when you're trying to grow so far so fast, you don't take time to build those yeah. community connections and relationships. I found actually my relationships have gone deeper in this time because yeah. you value them more. 
Yeah. And where we're, I think before it was like, we're trying to get somewhere. We're trying to build something where, you know, keep taking ground, keep taking territory. Right. And sometimes you forget what the main thing is, which is love God and make him known. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. Well, um, so when it comes to healthy habits, you're, you're, you're reading, yep. you're working out, working you're out, losing weight, eating healthy. Um, eating healthy. Talk yeah. to me about that. What have you yep. done with your diet there? Um, I, we're, we're doing a, uh, an online app that has really helped us with just how we think about food. And so for me, that was a big deal is changing what I'm taking into my body. And I never thought I could. I always thought, you know, I, I'm a bread guy, like, bread. okay. And, uh, but it, bread is not necessarily great for you. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and I never thought that I could, anytime I would think about our sound guy in arms, the back, who's Italian, by yeah, the way, just about had a heart attack. Of course. Yes. I, and I get it. I get it. Cause I want to eat it, yeah. but I never thought I could do that. But now I think differently about what I'm putting in my body and it's the effect is actually working. So, and you, and you feel it not just in losing weight. Do you feel it? I know that when I eat healthy versus when I don't eat healthy, it's not just a physical effect. Yeah. It's, it's an emotional, yep. it's a, it's a mental mm -hmm. thing. Yep. You, you, same way for you. Yeah. It's helping me create healthy habits in other areas. Yeah. So, yeah, I think the whole, I think that's what it's been over this last year. All right. Unfortunately we had to, we had to cut right there because, because I'm a rookie and my phone went off. Yeah. So anyway, Hey, we're going, we're, we're, we're here though. And we're talking about healthy habits. Um, so, the thing you're learning from the atomic habits mm -hmm. are you're setting goals, you're setting yourself up. The thing that I've learned during this is even though, like, those are great. We will set goals, you, you, yep. you create systems, all of that stuff. But we've got to also, in the time we're in right now, and I think going forward, we got to live in grace. Yeah. Totally. Because it's easy for things not to work out, especially right now, the mm -hmm. way you think they're going to work out. And Very even true. with people, like, you know, right now... Um, I mean, we've talked, we see people, there are people on Facebook losing their minds. Yes, they are. Right? Yeah. I mean, absolutely going nuts. Yep. And some of it is, um, I don't really think that's who they are. Mm -hmm. I think that they're so stressed out with yep. the pandemic and what it's done to their business. And every time, you know, you get out of the car and you go in, you got to put on a mask. I mean, it sounds like a little thing, but these are, these stress people out. Mm -hmm. So people are really stressed right now. And I think learning a place and finding a place of grace so that, you know, it, you, you've got things set up like, OK, so like this week, I, I was I was mowing a lawn on Monday. No, I was taking the trash out on Monday mm. and I hurt my back. Right. So I haven't worked out yesterday or today. Mm. Well, I'm living in a place of grace because right. I know that, you know, right now I, I mm. it would be that would be counterproductive. Yeah. But if I get up and I have a bad day, I've got to refocus myself on grace, mm -hmm. know that it's OK, mm -hmm. know that we're in a different time and a different place. And, uh, and that's, that's all right. It's all right to be in that place. Yeah. Yeah. Giving yourself grace for growth. Yes. So that, Giving yourself grace. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people are reacting that way because they're afraid. Yeah. And it, it is scary. We, you know, I was talking about this yesterday with a group of people that, you know, the hard thing about the pandemic is we don't know when it's going to end. There's no yeah. marker or seemingly or where the goalposts keep getting moved. Yeah. And, you know, that causes fear and, and fear causes people to want to control. Yeah. And that usually gets ugly. And yeah. You see it on Facebook every day, and which is why I spend less and less time on yeah, Facebook because exactly. I, I get angry. And so I'd rather not. And, that, and that's another change is learning sometimes what I'm allowing myself to be exposed to. Yeah. Like the news for me, I have to take in small doses because yeah. it produces something that isn't good inside of me. So I need to tap into grace, which usually comes from I need some positivity in my life and empowerment so yeah I, I had to drop the national news um a couple months ago yeah just because it's so negative yeah, like yeah. you know you watch the news and you think man if i go outside somebody's going to kill me right now yeah, totally. you know? <laughs> then you go outside you go wait a minute it's not so bad yeah. out here or there's some crazy variant strain that is yes. resistant to everything oh my gosh and but they think that's true they yeah. don't know that's true so yeah so living in grace setting up uh setting up systems um, taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. living in grace. Those yep. are those are three really good areas yep. that you can you can uh, uh, latch on to. And I know um, that we're here to help any of these guys that are watching. We're here to help. Mm -hmm. If they want to reach out to us, um, they can they can get a hold of us through our church phone number. I'll give it to you. It's seven zero seven. 
442-3736. And uh, you can call that number and uh, hopefully somebody will answer or at least check the machine. Um, but call that, ask for Marty or Willie, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll help you any way we can. I mean, we, we really want the men of Northern California um, to be able to, to be all that they can be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we're, uh, we just signed up for, um, in, at Lifehouse with a program called soul refiner. Yes. And if you're interested in that email us, uh, you can get my email. It's, uh, Marty Pronovo, P R O N O V O S T at gmail.com. And we'll add you to our, our group page and we'll let you know when there are events we're going to be doing. Uh, I'm, I haven't set this up yet, but we're going to be doing the Conquer series coming up here. Yeah. Um, and for those of you at, that were at the men's conference in Sacramento yeah. two years ago, Rodney White, yeah. White or Wright? Right. Wright. Yeah. Rodney Wright uh, was there and he shared. And so it's a little bit of that program. It's fantastic. Yep. And you're going to be doing that. And anybody watching can join. Yeah, anybody can join. We're going to do via Zoom. So you can be at home. Um, we're going to do it on a Saturday morning and right around That's 10 fantastic. o'clock because we don't want to get up too early. You can join in on the Zoom call. We'll have a little chat, yeah. show the video, and then have hopefully some breakout sessions with where great. you can be with two or three guys and talk. And that's about. specifically going after the porn, which we yeah. don't have time to get into this morning. No. But, you know, you do realize that all of Internet traffic, like everything that happens on the Internet, almost 40 percent revolves around porn. Wow. Is that crazy? It's shocking. Almost 40 percent of all Internet traffic is mm -hmm. porn related. Wow. And so uh, we got a whole bunch of guys watch us this morning that are involved in pornography, that are watching pornography. And uh, we just want you to know there's help. Yeah. We, we can help you. We will help break free of that. Because here's the problem with porn is it's just not real. No, it's, it's not. It's teaching you something that is going to mess up your relationships yep. in the real world, yep. you were going to say. I, it, it actually links into what we're talking about habits. Because yeah, that's true. I think the beauty of that series is it's yeah. not just about accountability. It's about changing the way you think. Yes. Because um, they talk about how it starts as a moral problem, but then it ends up as a brain problem because you've created a pathway in your mind yes. that you go to that when you need comfort. And this helps you rewire your brain. So, And that's another thing, uh, really, again, we don't have time to get into, but the mm -hmm. whole rewiring your brain. Yeah. I know Dr. Carolyn Leaf yeah, talks uh, has a lot of stuff uh, uh, on on YouTube and mm -hmm. books and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of it is you've got to, you, you really, you, it's, you got to break the habits. You got to set up uh, all the stuff you're doing, but you have to do it over and over again to recreate what your brain has got used to doing. Yes. And so it creates something new, and that's how you break free of addiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Very much so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's just like even with food, you think oh, I'll never be able to get over this, but you can. I mean, I'm I'm proof of that. Yeah. And you know, I, I would never have thought that I would eat the same thing every day, and and here I, a lot of my success has been just. You know, I'm eating the same thing, so I'm I know exactly how many calories I'm taking yeah. in, and that's affecting how my body's responding. Well, it's the same thing with my mind. If I keep exposing myself to negative things, it's just creating a pattern in my life that I go to instead of going to God, which is that's a good. So yeah, well, I think we're out of time. Uh, that's it for us uh, this morning. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thank you for being with us. We really appreciate it. I think we have uh, Dr. Sam. You guys all know Dr. Sam. You know and love him. What's not to love about Dr. Sam, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we love you guys. Thank you for joining us again. If you need help, church phone number 707-442-3736. You can email Marty at Marty Pronovo. Yeah. P-R-O-N-O-V-O-S-T -P -R dot at Gmail. At Gmail. At Gmail. Gotcha. All right. So you can uh, call. You can email. We 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 want to hear from you guys. We really love you guys. Really appreciate you being with us. And uh, happy Saturday. And hopefully next time it's not virtual. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully next time it's not virtual. But if it is, we'll figure out how to charge it. There you go. All right. <laughs> Have a great day. I'm praising the Lord. This is what we're going to do. All right, brothers? <laughs> you kiss the chords. It's real simple. A friend of mine, Jerry Peters, wrote this song for a bunch of us musicians. At the close of the day, 
I get down on my knees and I thank the Lord for what he's done for me. And when my day's work is done, I thank him for the sun that has shone in my life. And I thank him for the night. Praise ye the Lord. All I want to do is praise ye the Lord. He's been so good to me, so let's praise ye the Lord. Lift him up and praise his name. Though he knows we've come short He willingly provides a fresh new start Yes, I thank him for his heart And to talk about his grace His mighty power was surely amazed Yes, he's worthy of all grace morning, man. You already know. I'm going to tell you some stories. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is the life of Joseph, probably because his trials started when he was 17. And I had a little something that started, as you well know, when I was 17. So there was some commonality and then there were some other things, but I really used to relate and I relate a lot to the principles that I was able to pick up from the life of Joseph. So today, I want to tell you this story. You already know it. Many of you know it, but some of you may not. Joseph, 17 years old, and he's his dad's favorite son. You say, well, how do you know that? It's because he made him a coat of many colors. But because his dad showed Joseph favoritism, his brothers were jealous. So one day, his father tells Joseph to, to go find your brothers and see how they're doing. And so Joseph goes to check on his brothers and they see him coming in the distance 
and the jealousy starts rising within them. And they said, here comes that dreamer. Let's throw him into one of these uh, empty wells and let's see what happens to his dream. So Joseph shows up. He doesn't know what's about to happen. They get Joseph, take his coat off. They rip it. They get a sheep, put blood on it. They throw Joseph down in a, in a, in a cistern and they sit down and start eating. Now, that's pretty sick, brothers. That's pretty sick for brothers, blood brothers, to do that to their brother. Then all of a sudden, some Ishmaelites are coming down the path. Now, history tells us these were their cousins. This tribe was the cousins. And one of the brothers said, you know what? Hey, it's not going to do us any good leaving him in that cistern to die. Let's pull him out and sell him. So they pull him out. They sell him to the Ishmaelites. And the Bible says they take Joseph down to Egypt. Later on in the story, one of the brothers says, he actually said, he begged. Joseph begged his brothers not to send him down. And so you can almost see him, hands tied together, being pulled by a caravan, begging his brothers not to do this. And bye, see you later, Joseph. See you later, dreamer. Let's see what happens to your dream. The Bible says he gets down to Egypt. He is sold to a man. And uh, his, the man's wife lies on him. She tries to get Joseph time and time and time again to go to bed with her. And Joseph says, how could I do such a thing? How could I do such a thing? And basically offend God. How can I do that? I'm not going to offend me. I'm not going to offend God. And the Bible says he runs from her. And finally, she sits the trap. He still runs, tells her husband. Now Joseph ends up in jail. And while he's in prison, a couple of guys have dreams and Joseph has a gift. He can interpret dreams. God has given him a gift. So instead of him sitting there going through his, um, his pandemic season, he doesn't feel sorry for himself. He utilizes the gift that God has given him. And he tells these two men that had dreams, your dream means this, your dream means this. You're going to live, say goodbye to your family. Three days, you're going to be dead. And then he tells the guy that's going to live, he says, listen, when you are restored to your position, please remember me. He doesn't remember Joseph for two years. Pharaoh now has a dream. Nobody can interpret. And this guy that was in that prison with Joseph says, basically, my sins have found me out. There was a young man and he tells Pharaoh the story and Pharaoh says, go get him. And within hours, Joseph is cleaned up. He's shaven. He's got a haircut and he's standing before Pharaoh. He tells Pharaoh and interprets the dream and then tells him what to do about what he has dreamed. And Pharaoh says, can we find anybody wiser than this young man? And in a day's time, or we don't know how much time went by. Joseph goes from being a prisoner to being the number two man in all of Egypt. Now watch this. One day his brothers show up. It's been years. It has been years. And Joseph told them in his dreams, one day you guys are going to bow before me. When they show up, Joseph's the number two guy in Egypt. And they had to bow down. They didn't recognize Joseph. But Joseph recognized his brothers. And the story goes on. You can read it. Genesis chapter 37 through 50. Eventually he reveals himself to his brothers. And Joseph ends up taking care of his brothers. Here's a key sentence in his story. Their father eventually dies. And the brothers, now they feel like Joseph wants to get even. He's going to hurt them. And Joseph looks at his brothers and he says this. What you did, you meant it for evil. But God, he meant it for good. He sent me ahead of you to save lives. And basically, Joseph saved a whole family. But look what he had to go through to get there. So let me leave you with these principles that I'm able to extrapolate from the life of Joseph. And I think it will help us men in this season that we're all uh, going through and beyond. The first thing is this. Be careful who you share your dreams or your life with. Be careful who you share your dreams or your life with. Everybody is not for you. Everybody doesn't really care about you. 
everybody doesn't want to see you succeed. And so there are some things you could probably tell to anyone. There's some things you probably ought not share with a lot of people. Be careful who you share your dreams with. Joseph didn't really know his brothers shared his dream with them. They became jealous and then they attempted to kill him. That's what jealousy eventually does. Jealousy eventually, and I'm not talking about necessarily physical murder, physical death, but jealousy turns into something sour within us because we want what someone else has and we can't have it. They wanted that relationship that their father had. They wanted to be honored the way Joseph was honored. And because they couldn't, they're jealous of their younger brother. Men, be careful. Be very careful who you share your dreams with, which really is your life. You can't do life with everyone. Here's another principle that comes from there. Learn early to forgive. Watch this. When this woman lies to her husband and said, he tried to go to bed with me. Joseph invariably had tried to defend himself. Here's the man's wife. Here's Joseph. Who are you going to believe? And Joseph ends up going to prison. Then when he becomes the vice president of Egypt, there's no story about him going back, trying to get even with that woman. And when you read the story of his brothers, there's forgiveness all the way through. But see, Joseph learned to forgive early on. You don't survive a pandemic like he did without forgiveness somewhere. You don't survive a divorce, man, and get married again and survive that marriage without some sort of forgiveness in that first marriage. Some of you ladies that are peeking in, you don't survive the next marriage without forgiving the first marriage and what happened there. Be careful who you share your dreams with. Learn early to forgive. Here's another one. Run from evil. You don't know the future. Do you honestly think that Joseph if he had gone to bed with that lady, would he ended up in the position that he was in? Probably not. And now he's number two guy in Egypt. Hey, he can do whatever he wants, but he doesn't. He gets married. He has two sons and he becomes an incredible leader that today you and I read about. There are some men that we have been reading about on the news in magazines online, some of them should have taken heed to the life of Joseph. Some of them should have put on some Nikes or whatever tennis shoes they wear, put a B and put the gear in B for boogie and ran. But they didn't and other lives are messed up. My, my pastor, he says to me, Bishop Green, son, let me tell you what my, my job is in your life. I said, what's that, pastor? He says to make sure when you die, there's no smells. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, my boy, you know, sometimes when people die and they go out to the graveyard and they send them away. And as they're walking away, they invariably talk about the lives that they had touched and the great things that they have done. And sooner or later, whether it's there or sometime later, someone will say something like this. They did all those things. But do you remember? And they'll bring up something that has a smell. We're reading a lot about smells right now, my young friends. We're reading a lot about men who lived a certain way in public, but they lived a different way in private. That wasn't Joseph. And may God help us, us, not to live a life that one day when they've put us in the ground, somebody says, smell that? Smell that? careful you share your dreams with men learn early to forgive in fact the bible says basically the same measure we forgive will be extended to us learn to be known as a forgiver even when it's painful run from evil you don't know 
what the future has in store for you. Your coffee's probably cold. Why don't you go get another cup of coffee? I'll be right back. There's a lot of hand sanitizer in church. Anybody notice that? I don't know. At my church, they have these two hand sanitizer stations right by the front door greeters. That is not a good message. <laughs> people come in on Sunday. How you doing? Nice to see you all. It's good to see you. Thanks for coming. Visit. You're going to love it here. We just love people. You can just be yourself. You can just be yourself. We don't care. We don't judge you. We just love. You sit back and whatever questions you have, you let us know. We'll let you know whatever we can do for you, okay? Y'all newly married? You got four kids? Four kids. That is amazing. God love. We love kids here. Kids are like a little gift from God is what they are. They are just wonderful little creatures that God gives us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where are y'all from? Arkansas? Okay. Man, welcome back. Thanks for coming back. Uh, this time that you're giving me is a gift. You say, what do you, what do you mean a gift? You, it's something that you're giving to me. You're not going to get it back. So I'm, I'm not going to waste your time. And I really mean it when I say thank you. You have no idea how much I've missed being with you and how much I wish I was there in Humboldt with you. But I'm not. We're going to do the best we can. I hope you got a fresh cup of coffee or whatever you needed to do. Glad you're back. Let me repeat what I said earlier. Number one, be careful. Be very careful who you share your dreams or your life with. Everybody is not pulling for you. Learn early in life to forgive. It will take you far, even if it's painful, what someone did to you. Remember this. I heard someone say this once. You don't hold forgiveness, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness holds you. Here's a personal story about unforgiveness. You know, my son, I, all you, you know my story. You know, I... Lived a pretty crazy life, but uh, one of my sons, uh, my middle boy, he had a rough time kind of growing up because he wasn't in our home, fathered him out of wedlock. And one day we were at a retreat and the speaker was speaking on unforgiveness and he had a break. My boy was with me. We took a walk. He began to cry. He looked at me and I said, what's wrong? He says, I need to ask you to forgive me. I said, forgive you for what? And he looked me, man, straight in the eyes and said, for hating your guts. And then he began to give me a speech that I realized he had memorized. He did this. You weren't there. You do know I play basketball, right? You did, and he just, he, and, and I didn't know, man, how messed up I had made this boy's life. And I said, son, I'll, I'll forgive you if you forgive me. And we begin to work on this relationship because, see, he heard what Dave Buring said when Dave Buring said, you don't hold unforgiveness. Unforgiveness holds you. He went so far to say, it's like whoever hurts you is in a cell and you're outside making sure they never get out. They can't proceed in life. You can't really proceed in life. Amen? Learn how to forgive and learn how to forgive early in life. Here's the other thing I just said a few moments ago. Run from evil. You don't know where God's going to take you in life. Now, here's the last things I would like to leave with you. The last principles. Even in the dark, use your gifts. Joseph is in a prison cell in Egypt, but God gave him a gift. He could interpret dreams. And when those two men I talked about earlier had their dreams, Joseph could have just sat back and said to himself, I can interpret those dreams. I know exactly what they mean, but you know what? I ain't telling them nothing. I'm innocent. I'm here. I should be out of here. And so I'm not going to make anything easier for these guys. I'm not even going to tell this guy, you're going to die. And in three days, you're going to go back to your position. Man, it's on them. See, he didn't do that. He didn't harbor bitterness or unforgiveness, though he was hurt. There's a difference. And when he finally confronted his brothers, he told them, you meant it for evil. 
But God meant it for good. Somehow, I don't even know how, Joseph saw God in his situation, even in the dark. Use your gifts. Here's another thing. Be prepared when your ship shows up. Be prepared when your ship finally shows up or your opportunity for advancement or whatever opportunity God presents before you. Be prepared when the ship shows up and don't be at the train depot. What does that mean, Dr. Sam? See, a lot of people, they don't want to go through the discipline of preparation. And it is serving under someone you really don't want to serve under. Or whatever the situation is, I, it, on, in, your, in your something in your home, something on your job, and God's trying to prepare you for the next phase. But before you can pass the class, as my wife would say, you drop out. And then you wonder why you're repeating the class again. And the same things begin to come up because you've never allowed God through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of his word to deal with that area of your life. And you just keep repeating it over. It's like Groundhog Day every day for you. And then when your ship shows up, you're way out here somewhere because you're not prepared to get on board. My God, that was good. I'm joking then. Here's the last thing I'll leave with you. When your opportunity comes and God has promoted you like he did Joseph, rule, lead, serve with humility, not with a title. Rule, lead, serve with humility and not with a title. I can see a whole lot about that, but I think it just might be self-explanatory. So now let me tell you why Joseph was able to endure and to go through everything he went through. Because here's what it says three times. Genesis 39, 2, 39, 21, 39, 23. The Lord was with Joseph. Here's the only thing I want to tell you. I have no idea what you're going through. I have no idea what the season that we're all going through has been like for you. I do know what it's been like for me, but I want to tell you this. He's with you, my friends. The Lord is with you. His word says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You may not can feel him or see the Lord, but I want you to know he's with you and he loves you and he's going to help you with the decisions that you have to make. He's got surprises for you that you'll never receive if you drop out of the class. Hang in there. You be encouraged. Know that Dr. Sam and other men in the men's ministry were praying for you. And God's going to give you what you need to persevere. Father, I pray for my friends. I really do, Lord. I sure miss them. I don't know what they're going through right now, but you do. So would you give them the strength and the grace that they need? You gave it to Joseph. Your word declares you were with him. Would my brothers, as they look back on life, be able to say, he was with me. And may the people around them see that you're with them. Give them strength and grace in Jesus' name. Amen. here in the middle of this park around the corner from our house and I just want to share this with you men this moment if we can go here we'll be at the highest place on the planet
sincerely hope that you felt the presence of God through the music, through Pastors Willie and Marty, through our friend Joseph, straight out of the Bible. Leon, thanks. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. And again, man, be, be on the outlook for his new CD that's, uh, that's coming out. And let me remind you, we have conferences coming up. We have one coming up in May and Silicon Valley, and we have some others coming up as well. I'm not sure when I'll see you brothers again, but I do want to conclude our time together today by just blessing your lives. I really love you men, and I really appreciate you. So Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you will bless every one of these men. For some of them, Lord, this has been a really tough year, and somehow or another, they've, they've hung in there. And others of them, Lord, have been tried in ways that they never dreamt possible, but they too have persevered. And yet some of them, Lord, may have strayed, but they're still on the path, just a different part of the path. So God, I pray that today, their hearts were encouraged, their spirits were uplifted, and they find themselves just coming back a little bit closer to the path that leads to you. Would you bless these men? Those that are married, would you bless their families? Those that have children and grandchildren, would you bless them as well? Let these men know in a very special way that they are written on your heart and you're going to help them to persevere. Bless them today, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my brothers. <laughs>